in games. Let's say it one more time. Mm. He's averaging 40 over the last 21. That last loss against the Nets, Harden scored 58. He scored at least 30 in 18 straight games. He'll look to continue that streak against the Lakers tonight at 8. What's been most impressive about what he's doing? Uh, I think being in shape. If you say, mm. we, we, that, that sounds okay. too easy. Well, well, you have to, and Boone, you know this, yeah. you have to be in a certain kind of shape to put these kind of numbers up every night. I remember Trace McGrady said it one day with, with Paul George, when you become that next level superstar, your legs have to be in a certain type of condition because you have to do it every night. It was like we were teasing about Kuzma, he got the 42 and then kind of fell off for a couple games and he mm -hmm. got back hot again. He was like, wow, it is hard to get 42 every night. So now when you watch James Harden do it, you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. After coming back from an injury this season to get his legs back in his condition to perform the way he is. And what's even more impressive to me is that, think about it, he's the number one thing on the paper when you're trying to stop the Houston Rockets. Right. And he's still putting up these kind of numbers. That's, it's very impressive what he's doing. Well, Mike D'Antoni says Chris Paul will return sometime next week. This week, the Rockets also lost Clint Capella four to six weeks following thumb surgery. So how much of these injuries are starting to mount up for this team that makes Harden's run even more ridiculous when you're considering he's not getting help from other guys? Yeah, he's carrying the load, man. I mean, obviously, with CP being out, that hurts a lot. Capella being out, especially with rebounding and someone that dives to the hoop, gets the easy lobs and alley-oop dunks. Um, it makes James Harden job that much more harder but he's doing it he's performing he's carrying that team he's getting some help from Eric Gordon you know Gerald Green's playing very well other guys can step up as well but it's pretty much all on James Harden's shoulders yeah defensively it's going to be interesting to see how they play good team defense without Capella offensively James has proven he can hold down the fort to Chris Paul gets healthy but now with Capella who's going to be that rim protector who's going to get those big rebounds he was showing us this season well that's an interesting question because according to multiple reports Kenneth Fareed right is that guy now here's a thing that's just hmm concerning about him he's played 44 games mm -hmm. over the last two years and he's not hurt why is that because he hasn't been in brooklyn's uh rotation or should i say plan he wasn't in denver's plan once Jokic and nurkis came on we talked about in the meeting he had just got that big contract he said he saw the writing on the wall he gets to brooklyn kenny atkinson said he's just not a part of the rotation so that's what happened but i will give him credit he hasn't complained. He hasn't been a bad apple in the locker room. He's been going about his business. Now he's about to get bought out and possibly, you know, go to Houston for all the conversation. If that happens, he will bring energy. That's how he made his name in his NBA, a running the floor, getting loose balls, rebounding, setting good screens, and rolling to the basket. And speaking of situations, you're a guy that understands it depends as a big what your situation is for him to play with a guy like James Harden. Look, mm -hmm. he's averaged 13 points in his career. He's averaged nine rebounds in a season in his career. Can he get back to that form? He's still just 29. Well, Houston's going to hope he does. He's very young. He's very fresh. He doesn't have a lot of miles on his, on his legs right now. And the hope for Farid is, like, like 3D said, he brings energy. There's always, a, there's always room for a guy that brings energy and effort. And if he can continue to run the floor hard, hit, set good screens, roll to the hoop for alley-oops, play good defense, rebound the basketball, he could help that team out. Keeping with our theme of teams missing their key players, there's none bigger than one LeBron James for Ooh. the Los Angeles Lakers, <laughs> right? Well, they come into tonight against Houston riding a two-game win streak. The Lakers actually 5-7 and seven overall without LeBron now. That includes wins in four of their last six. Of the young Lakers who seemingly are growing through this experience over the past couple of games, Who's growing the most to you? Kyle Kuzma has been cooking. Uh, you look at his numbers throughout this stretch, 26 points, 7 rebounds, playing very well. Me and 3D talked about it last night with you, Chris. He plays downhill. He's, he's a runner. He takes advantage of his opportunities. He shoots the ball from a pretty solid clip from the three-point line. He makes his free throws. And he's getting more consistent. And that's the big thing for, for me with him because he can pick and pop. He can roll to the hoop. He, on defense, he can play the two, three, to four, sometimes the five, depending on who's who he's going against. So for him in his second year to be averaging 19 points and doing what he's doing, trying to hold that fort down offensively, doing a great job. I think for that OKC game was, was Alonzo Ball for me. And to hear him say that it, I'm playing with more confidence, I'm playing more aggressive now that LeBron's down on the floor. He's used to having the ball in his hand. So I'm saying to myself, guys, if Alonzo can play with this type of aggression and this type of focus and this type of confidence when LeBron comes back, 
then LeBron can say, okay, maybe I can take this quarter off because I know Zoe's going to do all the right things to keep things going. If I come out the game, we're up 10. I come back in, we're up 14 because Zoe is playing confident basketball. That's what I like when I saw that OKC game. All right, focusing on this matchup, the Lakers have also lost to the Rockets twice, and that's with LeBron, mm -hmm. and that's by an average of 12 points. All right, and James Harden scored 50 the last time Oof. these two teams went head to head. Can we expect the Lakers to be able to compete in this one? Chris Paul out, Cliff Capella out, that's different. But can they compete against James Harden, the better one, the way that they're currently constructed without LeBron on the court? Well, I think what Luke Walton will try to do is, is to tap in what we saw in the OKC game the other night. The question is when James Harden gets cooking, does your enthusiasm get taken out of you because now how do you slow him down? Mm -hmm. you know, on the flip side is you have to get some stops to get some easy offense to get your confidence going on the offensive side of the ball. I think something else I like that they did the other game was where they had Ingram playing the point, almost like yes. a point forward. Yes. That helps them offensively get guys involved, make plays for each other. So we'll probably see more of that tonight. LeBron will be cleared to practice next week. Lakers have Golden State on Monday, Timberwolves on Thursday, the Suns on Sunday. When you look at those games and you think of LeBron coming back, when do you foresee him being able to get back on the court if he's just now starting to practice on Monday? Uh, it, knowing LeBron, Boo, you've been around him before. If LeBron really wanted to play, I think tomorrow, if he had to, he would. Over but I, I think there's being smart just to make sure. So a practice or two, and if LeBron said he's ready, then he'll be back on the floor. Yeah, LeBron's done a great job with his body. As you guys know, he barely ever misses any games, as we've mm -hmm. seen throughout his career. Um, I leave it up to him. You know, I think it's one, if I'm one of his teammates, he knows his body better than anybody else at this stage in his career. Does a good job of taking care of it. He works out every day. And when he's ready, he'll be back out there. And when he does get back out there, the winds will start going like yes. this. Yeah. And if you, you go this, right, yeah. because yeah. the Lakers in the standings, they were doing this yeah. before mm -hmm. their recent uh, yeah. win streak, winning four of their last six. Does that take the pressure off LeBron to come back when, okay, the young guys are handling this right now, they're staying afloat, they've won four of six, as opposed to, oh, wow, we're falling, we're almost out of the playoff picture in the Western Conference? I think it's the other way around where when things were struggling, it might have been some pressure that maybe I come back a little sooner. Yeah. They win a couple. And now I want to get back now while they're playing well to feed off the good confidence mm. and the good play versus they're struggling. It's like, LeBron, come save us. Mm -hmm. No, now we found our stride. Now we found our confidence. Now come back to your yeah. point. Oh. Now let's really ride this gotcha. game and go that way. I think he's looking at it that way. Yeah, I agree 100% because now these guys have stepped up. Kuzma's playing better. You know, Alonzo Ball is playing better. Ingram's being a playmaker and doing more things. Then you bring LeBron, who's an MVP candidate, back into the fold and gives them a chance to get even more boosted, hopefully climb a little bit up in this, in this Western Conference standings. That makes a lot of sense. It'll be interesting to see how the Lakers perform tonight against the Houston Rockets and how they look when LeBron James comes back. Certainly something to be excited about. Russell Westbrook in. I had to uh, call Bron, you know, and tell him, like, you know, I apologize for <laughs> being that young player that wanted to everything at his you know, at his fingertips, and I wanted everything to uh, be at, you know, my threshold. I wanted to be the guy that led us to championship. I wanted to be the leader. I wanted to be all that, and, you know, the responsibility of being the best player in the world and leading a team is something that's not meant for many people, and Brown was one of those guys that came to Cleveland and tried to really show, show us what it's like to win a championship, and it was hard for him. Kyrie Irving on Wednesday night, uh, trying to give folks a perspective on where he is now versus his time in Cleveland when he was the young star playing alongside LeBron James and trying to give context to the comments he made during the three-game losing streak when he was sort of complaining about not getting the ball and about the young guys he was playing alongside. I'm going directly to you with this because you know <laughs> Kyrie very well, obviously from your Cavaliers days. What did you think when you heard this the first time? Yeah, to be honest, I, I didn't hear any negative in it. And I was somewhat surprised that people went as negative with it as they did in terms of he's trying to take a, a veiled shot at the young guys again and that he's trying to be more passive aggressive. I didn't see any of that and I don't believe that relative to Kyrie. I think he was being very transparent like, look, I realize that I had an opportunity there that I didn't embrace and appreciate. What I think is different, though, and I think is complicated for Boston LeBron was a multi-time MVP and a multi-time champion when he showed up, and he was clearly our leader. And he was eight years older, seven years older than Kyrie. In this situation, Kyrie and those other guys are very much more contemporaries. Mm -hmm. Kyrie is not a multi-time MVP. 
and they got one game away from the finals without him. So for him to come back, for Gordon to come back and introduce that much ball dominance, it was naturally going to take these young kids who have never played any other role than the role they just got done playing right. for that team. It's going to take them some time to find themselves. In Kyrie's case, he was sold. It's his team when he re-signed with us. And he recruited an entire team of free agents that all wanted to come. And then overnight, it was LeBron's team when LeBron decided to come back. Kyrie literally had a team taken away from him. Those young kids were never at that level yet. And so I think it's an interesting thing to see how Kyrie has now sort of become LeBron <laughs> in this circumstance. And he thinks of himself in a weird way as the old head, when in reality... Right. He's still just a kid, and he's just figuring it out, and people need to just let him figure it out because his heart's in the right place. Yeah. Oh, man, you said the word kid, though. Isn't that, that's what set him off when he was playing with LeBron. He, he bristled at the idea of being condescended, it seemed like. At least yeah, but I'm far. really old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the, the authenticity with, you know, in, in his words um, ring true for a lot of people. The tough part is the one place where they might not is in that Boston locker room with some of those younger guys because they are looking at it through a, a, a similar prism that Kyrie had when he was in Cleveland when LeBron came back. Uh, I don't know if anybody deals with millennials or young people. Try convincing them that their reality is not everybody's reality. Good luck. You know, and these guys played so well last year when Kyrie and Gordon Hayward were not in the mix. They have no reason to come back and believe that's not possible again for them. Jalen Brown, Tatum, Rozier. Right. They, they come back into this season with a confidence that you only accrue by doing what they did last year when these guys were out. So if you're Kyrie, you have to tread very carefully on the emotions and the confidence of these young guys because they've got something to hold on to that you didn't have when LeBron came back to Cleveland. There had been no playoff success. For Kyrie, all he was operating on was a vision of what he could do, uh, you know, kind of a blueprint of what he thought he could be as a player and what that team could be in the future. These guys have something in the pocket already. You got to be conscious of that and acknowledge that to me if you're Kyrie when you're dealing with these young guys. Brad Stevens was asked about this today, and he, he seemed to appreciate uh, Kyrie's reflectiveness and his, uh, the word he used was accountability as well. Um, it was really interesting. The comments came right after Kyrie closed the game for them and sort of reasserted himself as one of the great closers in the league, reminded his teammates perhaps as well why he wants the ball at the end of games. I wonder, though, is this, is this a thing that could fester? Is this a conversation that needs to be had now? I don't think so. And, and the reason is holding yourself accountable in the way he did. Mm-hmm gives he and Brad the ability to make it go away very quickly. Look, here's what I meant. Here's what I said. It's over. Right. And the way it goes away even quicker is if you stop talking about who the leader is right. and just go play basketball. It's very difficult. You mentioned the fact that those young guys uh, being millennials, right? <laughs> I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it has to do with you're 19 and 20 and the only role you've ever known how to play is being the guy who helps carry you to the conference finals. And then you're told, yeah, that was good, but we need you to sacrifice now. That's a whole lot easier for a 28-year-old who's yes. worn different hats in his right. career right. than it is for those young guys. So this was naturally going to take time, and this was naturally going to be Brad's biggest challenge. Brad's never entered a year with this kind of expectations as a coach. He's never entered a year with this many mouths to feed. So it takes time for them to find their stride, and that's to be expected. It's a really interesting dynamic, and great players often fall into this trap of talking about their guys and their <laughs> team because they're asked about it all the time. Um, but it, there's always something that's a little off about that to me, uh, declaring it yourself. The, the great, great players don't necessarily need to announce that. Kyrie's actions will speak louder than any of his words. Absolutely. If he just continues to do what he does best, and that's play his guts out and, and play for the greater good. It's not like I've never felt like Kyrie was out there playing for the spectacle of Kyrie, even, though, even if his game suggests that's what he's doing because it's so flashy. I never got the feeling that he was that kind of guy. Certainly not when LeBron came back. He, he slid into his role, even if he did it begrudgingly. He slid into the right role on those teams because he understood what, the, you know, what was at stake. Right. He's got to allow some of his younger guys 
to evolve in their roles doing the exact same thing. So you, you literally made me laugh when you said the spectacle, spectacle of Kyrie <laughs> because this is a guy who can go wrong foot, left-handed, yes. floater in the sure, paint yeah. over a big man yeah. to win a game. That's a spectacle in and of itself. Yeah. Where I think you've seen him showing real leadership, though, and he gets very little credit for this. He has picked up his end of the deal on the defensive side of the ball by leaps and bounds over where he was before. He's much better at the point of attack in a pick and roll than he's ever been. He's buying into everything that they are asking everyone else to do. He's just learning how to vocalize it. Boston's lead is now 14 over the Memphis Grizzlies on their home floor tonight. They lead that game 44-30 to and 5-2 and so far for Kyrie.